Hi, my name is Megan. I'm a technical producer here at Stitch. Today, I am going to walk you through adding a custom font to your Braze workspace. This is going to apply for your drag and drop builds. So we're going to start by going to settings, email preferences, and then your drag and drop email editor settings. So here you'll see default font name, and you have the option here to add a custom font. So you'll need the font name and the hosted CSS URL. This doesn't work for WOFF files or OTT files. It's only going to be for CSS. Um, Braze has a nice feature where there's tons of Google fonts already in here for you. So if there's a Google font you know you want to use, you can type it in and add it. And then what you'd see in here is Braze has inserted the font name for you in the CSS URL. So you're all set. And then you should see your font sample display here if it's working correctly. So when you do this, you save changes, and this is only going to apply. It's only going to become your default font for any new campaigns or canvases. It's not going to change anything that's already existing in your workspace. So we'll go here to this campaign I already have started. I'm just going to refresh so that you'll see the new option. And you'll also see here that Helvetica is still the font that's displaying. It's not going to change anything. But now in this drop down, we will have fuzzy bubbles as an option. So we can change our font and save that. I am also going to show you how to add a custom font if it's not a Google font. So let's say Adobe fonts is a good example. When you want to use an Adobe font, you can create a project and then you add fonts to it and then it'll give you it'll generate code for you to use so i need this link and the other thing to note with this is the font name is important so make sure like here it's capital but in the css here it's lowercase so we want to make sure we are using that font name otherwise it will not work and i can see my font changed over there so i know it's applied correctly save changes and go back to this campaign and then it'll keep fuzzy bubbles again it's not going to change something that you've already created but now i won't see fuzzy bubbles in this drop down i'll see nave as an option so i can go ahead and update my campaign to use nave. Um, what i found with some clients is one custom font is pretty limiting. You may have a font that is just not considered web safe, but that you want to insert in there, but you still want to use a web hosted font where they're supported. So I have figured out that you can actually put a variable in here and the URL doesn't matter. You can remove it or leave it in. It won't make any difference. You aren't going to see a sample, obviously. So we're just going to save this and use a variable as the font name. So I'll save that here. And then back in my campaign, I'll refresh to see that change. And now in the drop down, I have custom font as an option. Now it's not going to do anything just yet. We do have to add a little bit of liquid and our font styles, but this allows us to use more than one custom font without converting our template to HTML or coding our text as HTML in our drag and drop, which I know for some clients can be an annoyance. So this is a good workaround. So after doing that, I'm gonna go over here where I've started a content block, and this is just gonna be HTML. The first piece we're gonna put in is a sign liquid. And this is where we're going to define that custom font variable. And here I'm going to insert a couple of font names I want to use. It's important to note, I need to include single quotations because Braze is going to insert single quotations around this entire thing. So I only need to include the quotations in between my multiple font names. And then down here, what we're going to do is insert our styles for our fonts. So the nice thing, there's a little more flexibility in this and that we can use a font face and we can use a WOFF file. So I'm gonna use one of those. And then I've also just got the typical import. 
And with braids, you do need to surround each font styling with its own style tag. When I didn't do this and included it all in one style tag, it would show this font and this font, but not the second font. It was goofy. So I would definitely recommend including style tags around each one. And that's all you need in this. And what we'll do from here is we'll launch that content block and then we'll grab this content block liquid. And in our campaign, we can insert an HTML element and we'll put that content block in there. In the building piece, you won't see your font display, but over here in preview, you will then see those fonts working. And you can inspect. This gets a little tiny, but that's okay. We'll still get the idea. So here you can see I have all three of those fonts inserted and then my fallback font is still there. And then here I'm using distinct fonts just so you can see the difference and that it's all working. So if I remove that first font, Fuzzy Bubbles displays. And if I remove that second font, we can see Anta. Um, the other thing you may wanna do is in your fallback fonts, Helvetica is not an option. So let's say you still want Helvetica before Arial. Then you simply go to your content block and we can go ahead and just add Helvetica in here. And I don't need to add any extra style for that. It's just a different fallback font that I would prefer before Arial. So I gotta refresh here so that our new content shows. And when I inspect, I can see that Helvetica is now in there. So this just gives you a little more flexibility around inserting some fonts without being limited to just one. And that is how to add custom fonts to your drag and drop.